Well, we got another special treat tonight. Wait a He came ready to sing again tonight. He's going to do the same song he did Sunday, but he's working on a new one. And I'm telling you what, I'll get to retire for it. Jesus was a real children, all the children of the world that came in the world. And the one who finished this fight, Jesus was a real children of that 
bad a Christian? I said, well, I don't know. I said, I don't know uh, whether there are bad Christians or good Christians. There are just saved Christians. Right. Now, what category you fit into, that might be within your mind. But the only kind of Christian I know of is just a saved Christian. You might not live as good as you could, but whether you're bad, no, you're just saved. And there aren't bad sinners, and there aren't good sinners. They're just sinners. There aren't good people that go to heaven. It's saved people that go to heaven. It's not bad people that go to hell. It's unsaved people that go to hell. So Paul is writing to the church at Rome, instilling in them that just because some of them were Jews, that didn't open the kingdom of, of God for them. Just because they were Roman citizens didn't mean anything. That everybody had sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, the Ayatollah and Iran is a sinner. Obama is a sinner. Hillary Clinton is a sinner. Glenn Crow is a sinner. Alan Lynn is a sinner. Kim Reynolds is a sinner. Robert Reynolds is a sinner. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That's why I'm here. <laughs> now what's the difference? The difference is that we are sinners that's been saved by the grace of God. And it is not up to me to judge you or Obama or the Atoa, that's God's business. Right. My business is taking care of me and getting my heart right with God. So I realized one day that I was a sinner and the only way I was ever going to escape hell and the only way I was ever going to get to see Jesus, the only way I was ever going to have eternal life is accept Christ as my Savior and I did that. Now am I as good as I could be? No. Will I ever be? No. Why? Because I'm still here in a human body. And I'm still susceptible and I'm exposed to the same things today that I was 71 years ago. Right. Nothing has changed. Except I've been born again. And since I've been born again, then I have an adversary. And his name is Lucifer, Satan, the devil. And his objective is he cannot he cannot take the salvation that God has given me away from me, but his objective is to try to get me to destroy my testimony and my influence amongst other people. Amen. That's his sole objective. If he can get me to say something or do something or act in a way that would be offensive to people and offend them, then that's, that's his job. He's doing good. So Paul writes and said, none of that makes any difference. Who you are, what you are, how good you are, how bad you are. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now last week, we started the fifth chapter. I think we did five verses. I'm going to just touch and go real fast over those down to where we need to go. But this week we'll get to it. The word justification we touched that last week. Atonement. Uh, reconciliation. Now, there are, there are three or four of these words, but all these words have the same meaning. Justification. Reconciliation. Atonement. They all mean the same thing. Don't ever get mixed up on them because they're important to you as a Christian. So in the first verse of, of the fifth chapter, he says, therefore being justified. <coughs> I've justified <coughs> most of my life of things that I did by saying, this is the reason I did this because if they hadn't have done that, or if they hadn't have said that, or if this hadn't happened, then I would not have done this. 
if you ever fit in that category. That's called self-justification. Have you ever got into it with your husband? Have you ever got into it with your wife? Have you ever said to them, see what you made me do? I wouldn't have done that if you hadn't done this. See what you made me do. No, that's justified. You're trying to use something that somebody did to justify the way you're acting either. Amen, that's a good Amen. And that don't work. Now how are we justified? It says, therefore being justified. This is in the eyes of God. Being justified by faith. How do we get justified in the eyes of God? By faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So justification simply means that we, we are placed in a position as though we were as the pure driven snow white like we have never done anything in, as wrong in our life. Now when you ask Christ to come into your life and to save you, it is Christ that justifies you, justifies me before God. So we're justified by faith through Christ and then we have peace with God. Now I didn't touch this last week and I meant to. And I preached to Barbara after we got home. Now it says that we have peace with God. And I want you to underline or make your circle, we have peace with God. And I want you to write out there beside of it, enemy. Enemy. When can a peace treaty get signed?
We were at peace with God. We were at war. Now we're at peace and we're saved because we've accepted what He did for us and He justifies us before God. Now, since we have that, we've got saved, then we have access to God. We said last week, when you pray, we do, we do not pray to Jesus. We pray to God. We pray to our Father. But we pray to, through Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in order to have access. And we have access to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then he said we rejoice in this. But he said we also got some more rejoicing. He says we glory in tribulations. The last six or seven weeks, it's been one thing after another with me. Uh, I, I told Barbara yesterday, I guess it was, I said, I hadn't blown a plug yet. I said, I, I don't see why he just don't just leave me alone, you know, and quit letting trials and things just day after day after day. I'm not going to blow a plug. Well, today came a little harder. <laughs> I wished I hadn't said yesterday what I said yesterday. Maybe today wouldn't have happened today. So I'm not going to say today I wished he would just lighten up because I'm not going to. Because I don't know what's coming tomorrow. It might be severe, severe pressure in a place that I might say, that's it, I quit. Anytime that you run that mouth and think that you're doing pretty good, you better look at it. Oh, and that's what you call a sucker punch. He, I got, I sucker punch myself. So, I don't know what's coming tomorrow. I've just made it by the grace of God up until right now. By His grace, I've just been able just to keep my nose above the water. I have inhaled a few drops and got choked a few times, but I am still got my nose above the water by the grace of God. So, tribulation comes because we need patience. Patience is perseverance. Learning to keep on keeping on. And perseverance teaches us experience. Experience. Now I've got a lot of experience. But all the experience that I've got, I need more experience or God wouldn't be, be exposing me to the tribulations. What do you think? So do we ever get to the place that we've got enough perseverance that he does not have to allow trials to come our way. No. See, I've got to remind myself of that. I thought I was doing pretty good. In fact, I was doing good enough that I was bragging on me. And that just that shows me that the perseverance that I had, it just got me thus far. And God said, all right, I need you to get further, so I'm going to have to let some more trials come your way. And then when you come through those, I'm going to put some more here. And then when you come through those, I mean, it's a, it's a growing thing. Have you ever gotten to see the man that uh, is a gold medalist in five events this year that's 100 years old? Did you get to see him yesterday? I figured out what I'm going to do with my life. He said he was 70 years old and he had retired and he said to his son, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. He said, I'm not going to work anymore, but I need something to do. And his son said, Dad, have you thought about the Senior Citizens Olympics? He said, no. A hundred years old, Last week, he won five gold medals. One in the hundred, one in the pole vault, one in the high jump, one in the discus, one in the shot put. 
He said, I have 286 medals. And all of them are gold except for four. I'm telling Tony about it. I said, Tony, you should see him on the pole vault. His arms are wrinkled and they're hanging down. I said, we need to do this ourselves so we can get long sleeve shirts so that we will look at it. <laughs> and I told Barbara, I said, that might be something that I could do. I need to get in shape. I said, that might take some more consideration. I would like to do that, but I don't know whether I would like to get in shape or not. Shape might not be in my vocabulary. And one thing I liked what he said. He said, all these medals, I have not had a trainer. That tells me something. He's got perseverance. He doesn't have people trying to show him and prod him. He's motivated. Motivated. So that's what we need as Christians. We don't need to be self-motivated. We need to be spirit-motivated, word-motivated, God-motivated, motivated by each other, strengthened, lifted up by each other. So he said we, we have perseverance, and perseverance brings experience, and experience brings hope. That means that we've got something to look forward to tomorrow. Next week, next year, a thousand years from now, 10,000 years from now, we have something the world has not, and that's hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then in the fifth verse he said, and that hope maketh not a shame. Uh, you're not disappointed. God's been disappointed in me, but I've never been disappointed in Him in my life. So with what He's done in my life, I'm not disappointed. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given to us. When we get saved, the Spirit of God without measure comes into our lives as our comforter, our guide, our strength and empower us to keep on keeping on. And by that, we are not disappointed because He has poured His love out in us and we are able to keep on keeping on. All right, we're ready for this week, sixth verse. And when we were yet without strength. Now, He's bringing it to a personal level. He's talking about everybody that has been saved. Everybody that is a born again believer. For when we, put your name there, were yet without strength. The word strength means powerless. When we had no power, we were powerless. Have you ever worked so hard, lifted so much, walked so far, that you simply could not put one more foot in front of them. You had to sit down. You could not even lift your arms anymore. You were so worn out that time. That's what he's talking about the church, that the people that are saved. When we were powerless, when we had no strength, and I like this part, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. I want you to underline the word do. And I want you to write above it, right. R-I-G-H-T. The word do means right. When we were yet without strength, in the right time, in the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now it wasn't anything that we wanted. It's not anything that we tried to attain from anybody. God knew that we were unable to save ourselves as a people. 
He knew that before the foundation of the world. And he knew that when the time was right, the right time, he would send Christ and he would be our sacrifice for our sins. So at the right time, at the right moment, at the right place, at the precise time, Jesus gave his life on Calvary for one reason. He died for the ungodly. Now who is the ungodly? We are. That's all of us. How do we know we are? Because he said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So he's heaping us all in that same tub, in that same bucket that we all have sinned and come short of the, of the glory of God. And he died for the ungodly. Seventh verse, and scarcely for a righteous man will one die, and yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He said there might be a slim chance that somebody might die for a righteous man. Just, it might be. Said a, a good person, well, somebody might occasionally give their life for a good person. But boy, he put the nail to the coffin when he said but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now this takes out of the equation. Always felt I had to do something to get right with God. I always said, I am not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to go to church and get regular until I know that I can live a Christian life. So I'm a man of integrity. How about you? I ain't being no hypocrite. So what I was trying to do, and what most try to do, is that they try to get to heaven by their own power. See, I'm taking the power away from God. And I'm denying that he died for me while I was yet a sinner. If I could get to heaven by being good, then there would have been no need for Christ to have died. Period. Amen. So then I said, well, I need to quit doing some things before I start to church. I need to clean my life up. Have you ever gone through that process? I quit doing this, then I can go. I quit saying that, then I can go. Then I'll feel good about my... Listen, Christianity ain't nothing about you feeling good about yourself. If you start feeling good about yourself, something's wrong with you. Right. Because if you feel good about what you're doing, then you're going to take all the praise and the honor and the glory, and you're going to bask in it. So we need to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. While we were yet sinners, He died for us and took our place. Then I realized I could not get good enough. I could not get dedicated enough. I could not be sinless enough in order to be a Christian. See, a Christian is like a crow. Let me tell you how that is. You've got to be born one. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? You're right. I'm a crow because I'm born a crow. You're not a crow. You never will be a crow. But we that have been saved, we're Christians. And why are we Christians? We've been born. We've been born again. Right. Now we're Christians. In the family. I'm glad I think back sometimes. <laughs> you can write that down. You might want to use it when I'm dead and gone. About crow Christians. 
But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, notice these next three words. Man, it's so important. What's more important than Christ dying for us when we were sinners? Much more then. I mean, in Him just dying, shouldn't we just cut it off there and saying Jesus died for us when we were yet sinners? No. Oh. He says, much more then, being now, being now in the present tense, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Man. That is, that rattles me. That shakes my foundation. Much more than being now. Now when am I being justified? And how long will I be justified? Now and forever. It's a perpetual thing. A perpetual thing. Now why is that important? What's the devil doing now? Deceiving people. Where is he? Huh? He's here. And where else? In our minds. He goes home with his throne and accusing. He said that he accuses the brethren day and night. Day and night. Now why is it important that we are just being now justified? Our adversary stands before God and he says, look at Glenn. He just did that. Accusing. It says, being justified now. It's Jesus that stands at the right hand of the Father, which says to the Father, He is yours because I died for Him on Calvary and my blood made an atonement for His sins when I presented it in the, the holiest of all in your presence, Father. He is yours. No railing accusations can come against Crow. Why? Because I'm being justified. Perpetual thing. A daily thing. That grace, 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 grace keeps moving forward and forward and forward. Now why is that important? Said we shall be saved. Well, what are we going to be saved from? From the wrath through Him. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. One day God is going to repay everybody that lived on the face of this earth that rejected His Son as Savior. He's going to bring wrath on them by judging them and casting them into the lake of fire. So, I've escaped that. You that are saved have escaped that. I'm going to finish the 10th, 11th verses and we'll quit. For if when we were enemies, that's that word that we used back in the beginning of it, we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. <coughs> reconciled means the same thing as justified. Justification. He brought us into the presence of God by the death of His Son. Here's those two words again. Much more. Much more. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Our salvation has nothing to do with me, you, anybody else, except all we need to do is to believe and, and exercise our faith. 11th verse, and not only so, not only is this that He died for us all the yet sinners, not only that He has saved us, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom, talking of Jesus, 
We have now received the atonement. Atonement means the same thing as justification. It means the same thing as reconciliation. That means that we have been brought into the presence of God by the, the sacrifice of Jesus giving His life on Calvary. And we are there. We are being justified. We are being atoned for. We are being reconciled. It is a thing that is going to go on until the Lord takes us out of this world and takes us home to glory. And I'm glad that I'm in that position. I'm not smart enough to argue my case before God. Neither are you. Because our case would be defeated. It be, wouldn't even be put on the docket. Because our case requires blood sacrifice. And that's what Jesus, He took our place and gave us. We look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. Wayland. Man, I'm so glad you sang for us tonight. You are a very, very handsome man and a beautiful voice. I am so proud that you come to church here. Let's stand together.